What's up, everyone? And today I'm bringing a deck patrol on my Nephthys deck. Now, Nephthys is a very, actually, a very cool uh, ritual based deck, and it's more or less known for its uh, Link 3 monster. Now, before we get into the video, I just want to mention to subscribe to the channel because 90% of the people watching this video are not subscribed. With that out of the way, let's get right into the video. First off, I run the three Conductor of Nephthys. Now, Conductor, you can ritual summon this card with ritual. With rebirth of Nephthys. Man, that, that's really hard to say. So, I get I get tongue tied when I say it. If this card is ritual summon, you can special summon one Nephthys mo ritual monster from your hand or deck. Except Conductor. And this is treated as a ritual summon. And if this card is attributed or destroyed by a Nephthys card effect, you can activate this effect during the next standby phase. Destroy up to three Nephthys cards except ritual monsters. One from your hand, deck, and field. Now, the, the Nephthys actually have some really cool effects to where they destroy their own monsters to get additional effects. And Conductor is actually pretty good because you can basically ritual summon your devotee out straight from the deck. No ritual spell needed. So I guess this is kind of like a Megalus before Megalus existed. Next, I run three, Devotee of Nephthys. Now on Nephthys, you can, same with a uh, Conductor, you use a uh, Rebirth of Nephthys. And if this card is ritual summoned, you can activate its effect, special summon one Nephthys monster from your deck, also destroying it during the end phase. So basically what you want to do is usually get one of your either Disciples, Chronicler, or maybe even the Sacred Phoenix. There's multiple options you can definitely do with this, but it helps set up plays. Next, I run two Cerulean Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys. Honestly, I actually think the other two are better than Cerulean. Now, this has an effect during your main phase. You can destroy Nephthys cards from your hand and or face up field. Then destroy an equal number of cards from your opponent's, your opponent controls. Equal number of monsters your opponent controls. Now, most of the uh, Nephthys, especially the Devotee and Conductor, gain additional effects when they are destroyed. Like Devotee, if uh, is in the graveyard, you can special summon it straight to the field. I also run the one Cyber Angel Benton, helps search out a Vandy's Ruler. I also run two Incantation Chalice Slime. Incantation still a good ritual support. I don't know if that will ever change, but so far it's not. Next, I run three Chronicler of Nephthys. Chronicle, you can target one Nephthys card in your graveyard, except Nephthys or Chronicle. Destroy one card in your hand, and if you do, add that, tar add that target to your hand. And during next seven fights after this card was destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can add a Nephthys card from your graveyard to your hand. So by destroying it off of the effect of like Cerulean, Devotee, and others, you can actually gain additional effects, as in Chronicler can literally add one of your Nephthys cards from your graveyard back to your hand. I run three Disciples of Nephthys. Disciples during your main phase, you can destroy one card in your hand, and if you do, add one Nephthys monster from your deck to your hand. So it's kind of like a Rota, essentially, to search out any of your Nephthys monsters. I run the one Matriarch of Nephthys. Target one level four level Nephthys monster in your graveyard, except Matriarch. Destroy one card in your hand, and if you do, special summon that target. This one can be uh, pretty good to uh, help extend and also get a monster out for like a uh, Vertanaconda, Vanity's Rulers, just to bring out some powerful cards. I also run the one Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys. Now, the effect of Sacred Phoenix very rarely comes up. Once returned during your next standby phase, after this card was destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, special summon this card from your graveyard, and if you do, destroy all spells and traps on the field. Doesn't really hurt you because you don't run any, because I, there's no traps in this build, so it, it very rarely comes up. Most of the times you're going to be summoning it off of Cerulean, and you can also summon it off of Simorph as well. Granted, that's going to be a little bit harder, but if you're going first, it should be pretty easy. I run the Two, Incantation Candle. Candle, reveal a ritual spell. Special summon both card from your hand and one imp from your monster from your deck. And if this card is special summoned, you can add a ritual spell. All the imps do that to where they reveal to special summon themselves and an imp. However, you can only activate one of their effects. So if you do the reveal, then you cannot use its effect when it's special summoned. So let's say I reveal a candle. I can't use the second effect to assert a ritual spell. I run the two Talismandra. This one can reveal a ritual monster in your hand. It's special both this card and one imp from your deck. If this card is special summoned, you can add one ritual monster from your deck to your hand. I also run the one pencil plume. Pencil plume can reveal a ritual monster, special summon this and an imp. And if this card is special summoned from the deck, you can target a ritual monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. I also run two Vantage Rollers, because I think Vantage Rollers just basically goes in any ritual deck because most ritual decks do not have a normal summon. While this you can nor normal summon the other Nephthys monsters, if you can get um, Vanity's Ruler out on the field, that's obviously the much better solution because this can really hurt your opponent. Also run the one Dark Magician and the one Red-Eyes Black Dragon for Dragoon plays. Moving on to spells, I run three Pot of Prosperity. 
In most instances, I'm going to run Prosperity over Extravagance just because with Extravagance, you're discarding a random number. And considering we run some 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 one of such as Dragoon, Axis Code, Verte, if you bash one of those, it's going to really hurt. And this deck doesn't really need a whole lot of draw power. Of course, draw power is always good, but I'd rather just uh, excavate six and search and add one rather than banish a random number of cards in my extra deck to draw two. Next, I run three Rebirth of Nephthys. Rebirth of Nephthys is essentially the uh, ritual spell for Nephthys. You can ritual summon any Nephthys ritual monster and you must distribute monsters from hand or field to total level equals or exceed the levels of the ritual monster. So basically a very generic ritual monster. It does have an additional thing too. If you trip Devotee or Cerulean, you can destroy one card in the field, but that rarely comes up. Also run the two Incantation Inception. Still, in my opinion, the best ritual card because not only can you recover it from the grave by its own effect, it can also special summon an imp. It, it can ritual summon any ritual monster, so you can do a whole lot. I also run the three Preparation of Rites. Preparation of Rites, you can add one level seven or lower ritual monster from your deck to your hand. Then you can add one ritual spell from your graveyard to your hand. So it's good at recovering your, your Inception. And the one cool technique with that is that with rights, you can use this up to three times a turn. You can use it initially, use rights to recover it, then use its own effect to recover it again. I also run the one pre-preparation of rights, a, a bit of a weaker version in comparison to preparation of rights. And I would run more, but it was just the kind of like the odd card out. I also run the one red eyes fusion for Dragoon plays. Moving on to the extra deck. I run three, Nephthys of the Sacred Phoenix, or not Sacred Phoenix, Sacred Preserver. Requires two Nephthys monsters. You can only use the following effects of Sacred Preserver once per turn. The first effect, you can add one level eight winged beast monster from your deck to your hand. Then you can add one ritual spell from your graveyard to your hand. You're not really using that effect as much because you don't really need the Sacred Phoenix in your hand. It's better being in the deck and then you just special summoning it off of Devotee. Now, Preserver has the additional effect. Do we destroy one of this monster this card points to? Special summon one of this monster with a different name from your graveyard, but negate its effects. So you can use it to uh, get out a different Nephthys monster, and of course, some of the Nephthys monsters have an effect that uh, can activate when they are destroyed. Next, I run the one Nephthys the Sacred Flame. Basically considered as one of the best um, ritual link monsters. Now this, the Sacred Flame gains additional effects depending on how many ritual monsters used for its ritual summon. If you uh, use only one, you cannot be destroyed by battle. Two, cannot be destroyed by card effects, also gains 1200 attack. Three, another player can target this card with card effects, also gains another 1200 attack. So it essentially becomes a big monster with immunity. It cannot be destroyed by battle, card effects, or even targeted. Not to mention it gains 2400, so it literally doubles its attack. I'll also run two win the wind charmer, because we do run some wins in this deck. The one cross sheep. Cross sheep is just really good with ritual based decks. Doesn't really come up a whole lot, mainly just because I'd rather prioritize Vantage Roller or the prevalent Vertanaconda. Speaking of Vertanaconda, I run IP Mascarena, Phoenix, and Unicorn. I run one Smorph Bird of Sovereignty because this card is special to summon out your Cerulean as well as some other cards. This can special summon out your Sacred Phoenix of Nessus as well. Granted, you can also get it out with Devotee, which is going to often be more of the better route. I also run the one Axis Code, one Opelosa, and of course, Dragoon to round out the extra deck. That's going to be all for my Nephthys deck for all email. What do you think of this deck? think it's pretty cool. Anything you think you'd change? And no, one thing I always hear with my ritual based decks is that I should only run one Vantage Roller. That, I don't really think that's also quite a correct decision. First off, Nephthys are not dry drawn. They don't have all that kind of power. And you say, you can search out with Benton. Benton's limited to one, so that's not always gonna come up. And if you happen to open two vantage rollers, you can just use one of them for a ritual summon. It's that pretty easy, it's that easy. Well, that's gonna be all for this video, and I'll see you in the next video, bye.